and welcome to Jurassic Reviews. On this episode, we are going to take a look at a figure of a monster that is actually not part of the Godzilla franchise, one that originally was created as a competitor. That figure is the Prime One Studios Gamera 1999. This figure was announced back in 2017, and is based on the Gamera from the 1999 film, Gamera Revenge of Iris. I think I pre-ordered mine almost a year ago. This is the vinyl version. There were two other versions you could get, both of which were made of polyresin. The resin versions are a bit more detailed, as resin allows for more detail than vinyl, and the upper tier resin one included a base display for the figure, and a swappable light-up hand and multiple heads. If you haven't really paid attention to the development and release of this figure, let's just say it was met with quite a few delays. I think the original planned delivery for this guy was supposed to be back in November or December, but that didn't happen, and it was month after month of delays. The resin version released a few months ago, but the vinyl version still took a bit longer. I opted for the vinyl version, as it was a lot cheaper and more in line with the vinyl X Plus Godzilla figures that I collect. I'm a big fan of Gamera but for whatever reason I only have one other Gamera figure in my collection, which is a Bandai Gamera 95. This one though makes up for my lack of Gamera figures. Before we begin, here's a quick look at the box it came in, which is absolutely huge. This is larger than almost all of my X Plus figure boxes that I've gotten, except for maybe the Comic-Con Gigantic Godzilla 1995. And the box is that big for a reason, because this figure is massive. He stands just below 19 and a half inches tall and is about 24 inches from head to tail. This figure is also a lot more heavy than any of my other figures, as it's a solid piece of vinyl. It's not hollow like the X Plus figures, so it weighs almost 30 pounds. There is one more thing I want to mention before I move on to the sculpt and that is each one of these is individually numbered. The number can be found on the bottom of its foot. The one I got is number 162. Now let's take a look at this amazing sculpt. Despite being the vinyl version, I have no complaints as far as any lack of detail here. This thing is a sight to behold, and is a pretty faithful representation of the suit in the film. This camera stands upright, much more so than the 95 and 96 cameras. Detail all over the body is great with little scales and bumps and creases in the skin being clearly visible. The underneath parts of the shell that cover his chest look awesome, and even features his stab wound that he received from Iris near the end of the film. This wound has an exit point on the back of the shell too. This detail with the wound reminds me a bit of something you'd see from a Rick exclusive if it were an X Plus figure. The arms feature five fingers with sharp pointy nails, as well as larger spikes near the wrist. Each of these nails are made of a translucent material. It's a similar situation on the feet, with the nails also being translucent. And like the hands, there's an additional larger spike, this time found on the back of each foot. Moving to the head, I think this is a pretty spot on sculpt. The teeth are each individually sculpted, and includes his large tusk-like teeth, of which there are four, two smaller ones and two larger ones. The mouth is really detailed, and you can see his tongue, and there's even detail on the roof of his mouth. There was a lot of close-up shots near the end of the film that let you see his mouth really well, and it is pretty much exactly like this. Another detail I like on the head is the row of spikes that start near the nose, and end around the shell. It looks really cool. Speaking of the shell, it is huge and impressive. There's a few shots in the film where his shell is sort of silhouetted by fire around him, and he looks really terrifying, and I think the skull captures it really well here. Each scale-like piece on his shell looks awesome. I always love the more pointed design found on the 99 version, that extends out from the body. It just gave him a more menacing and intimidating look than the previous two designs, 
despite him being a more good monster. Moving to the tail, it is a short but bulky one. I love the almost leaf-like looking scales that cover the top of the tail. So yeah, I could probably go on forever about this sculpt. Everything about it is excellent. And that excellence continues with the paint. The majority of the figure, which includes the arms, legs, body, head, most of the shell, and the tail are painted green, with lighter green highlights found throughout it. But the body does feature some browns and blacks. There's actually a lot of brown found on the under part of the shell that covers his chest. The different spikes or fingernails and toenails are painted with brown and sort of a yellowish color. It's a fantastic looking gradient of these colors that's further enhanced by the translucent quality to them. Moving to the head, its teeth and tusks are similar to the fingernails and toenails, though there is a bit more white and the brown is sort of mixed in and less of a gradient, especially on the smaller teeth. Inside the mouth, it's painted a few different shades of red. Closer to its teeth, it's a darker red and the tongue is much more lighter. The one last striking feature on his head are his eyes, which are painted green with black pupils. They look awesome. And I almost forgot to mention there's some lighter green blood in his wounds. That looks like it's just oozing out of him. Overall, this is a beautiful paint job. Before I give my rating for this figure, here's some comparisons with a few of my X Plus Gigantic Godzillas. Here he is with the Godzilla 2001. Here he is next to Godzilla 1962. Here he is next to Godzilla 1995. And here he is next to my tallest X Plus figure, the Godzilla rating out of 10, I give this figure a much deserved 10. This figure has quickly climbed up the list for my potential figure of the year. I am seriously blown away. I know I only own one other Gamera figure, but I have seen many others and I gotta say this is the best Gamera figure ever released, and I really think it doesn't have any competition there. This thing is just awesome, and Prime 1 delivered one of the highest quality vinyl figures I have ever seen. It's that good. Yes, it was delayed a million times, but I am so glad I kept my pre-order because figures like this don't happen often. I am really starting to feel like it's in a league of its own. I really hope Prime 1 gets the rights to work on some Godzilla figures. I would love to see what they could do with it. If you can find this figure, get it, though I think the availability is not so great anymore. 
I love the X Plus Yuji Sakai Godzilla 2002, but I think it now has a tough fight for my best figure of the year. This is another masterpiece. And that does it for my review of the Prime 1 Studios Gamera 1999. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel. My channel's small and new, but I hope to keep it growing as I love making these videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.